Hey, friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me again today is uh, my good friend, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing, buddy? Hey, good to see you, Harrison. You too, man. Uh, we, we made it through we made it through Christmas, made it through New Year's. We're, we're in the slide back towards our routine, and uh, that, that's all right with me. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's interesting here, too. Uh, every morning I wake up, and, and we're, you know, December is kind of the dark, dark times. And mm-hmm. this morning I woke up, and it was actually a little bit lighter when I woke up this morning. Usually it's pretty dark, and... <laughs> Kind of, kind of a good, kind of a good feeling, right? The sun is rising, and uh, you know, summer's on on the uh, on on the turn of the turn of the season here. So it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's nice. That's the optimistic view. See, here's where snowstorms just get a whole lot less fun. Uh, once you sort of put away Christmas trees, I just um um we had our fun. Yeah. Let's 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 go. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, we we always tackle a, a topic. What would Jesus sort of say about? And, and uh, we we were kicking some stuff around before, and uh, genuine love. Um, because we, we use love as almost a catch-all word today. And so maybe we need to dissect what, what love actually is, what, what genuine love is, and then what Jesus would say about it. Yeah, well, think about this for a second. We use the word, I can say, I love a cheeseburger. We had, we had a, went out for hamburgers, a couple of guys, and I yesterday went to five guys, right? Ooh. And uh, somebody said, I love their hamburgers. And it was a, gosh, I'm getting hungry right now thinking about it. But yeah, a lot of good grease on there. It was a double patty. And it's like, I love my hamburger. And then a little later on, you could say to what your dog, I love you, you know, I love you dog, right? And then and then you can say to your child, I love you. And then you can say to your wife, I love you. And then all you the same. Say, yeah, Jesus, <laughs> I love you. And it's the same word, right? But think about the think about the range of, of what that word can mean. And then <laughs> And then our society, I think we were talking beforehand too, like the, the word love in our society oftentimes is 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 positive feelings or it's like a uh, sending you love and happy thoughts. And so love is just, it's it's just kind of a, a ethereal type feeling and just kind of a happy thoughts, right? And so, yeah, so what is love? I mean, what does love mean? And I think, you know, John 3.16 has a lot to say about that. For God so what? Love the world uh, that he what? That he had a fuzzy, he's only begotten right? son. Yeah, well, yeah, um, there, there was yeah, an but, action here. There's an um, action, right? But 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 you know, I had an old I had an old professor once said that for God so loved the world that he had a fuzzy feeling for you, and, uh, <laughs> and falling no. short of what I need here. Um, right, right, right. So so for God so loved the world that he what that he gave. Mm-hmm. And that's important to sort of like focus in on that, because even the, the pastors who have sort of spent a little bit of time in the languages, they'll, they'll, say, they'll, they'll point out there are different words for love in the Greek, and they mean different things. And I mean, to an extent, that's true. But like, the, the kind of love that we need to talk about as Christians, it, it falls under this Jesus kind of love, because like, especially when we, we need to know that God loves us. And when we're called to, to love our neighbor, there can't be five guys involved, like we, we need to aim higher, because like, I'm, I'm all right with sort of like, trying my best to sort of five guys love, um, that that sounds weird, uh, but uh, <laughs> my neighbor, um, but, but love them the way I, I would love hamburger a love, hamburger burger. love. There we go. Um, but at the same time, um, the the Jesus dying on a cross for my neighbor thing is 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 tough uh, because I'm pretty sure that's actually the kind of love that that we're called to love each other with, right? Yeah. So so I think you know, as as I think about love, and 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 I've shared this before, and kind of shared in a comical sense, but there's some truth to it. You know, when we when I do premarital. Um, uh, counseling with couples and when we talk about marriage itself and and what is what is marriage and I always say this with a real fun fun way but there's truth to it marriage is death of the person right and so when I get married I die to what be there I mean literally as a man I promise in my vows that I'm going to forsake all others I'm going to forsake all things to die and bleed for my wife serenity my my, my Rennie and and so I'm dying to her, and she's dying to me, um, in in love and respect and submission and so forth. And so we're dying to our own desires, our own selfish ende- endeavors and ambitions. We're dying to what be there for each other. And so marriage is death. It's really it's death. It's death of service and love. But then you think about this too. Then then once you're then once you're married, then what happens is the married couple, as a husband and wife, they die to what to serve their children. Everything they have is for their children. And then the children, as I tell my, my kids right now, you know, take note of how your dad's dying for you. Because someday when I'm in a walker and uh, and I'm, you know, drinking out of a straw and drinking insure and 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 and, and I lose my mind, uh, you're going to be what? Dying to what? To serve your old man in my old age when I need help. You're going to be dying to serve and be there for me. And so, so this idea of love is in self-sacrifice for thy neighbor. And ultimately, like what you you hit earlier, um, you know what what is love? We see love that Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and give His life as a ransom for many. 
And so love costs something. Love uh, costs something as we give to our neighbor. And so again, this idea of love being just an, a, a feeling, you know, I would say, uh, you know, a hamburger feeling, that's just a, a it's a, it's a, a sentiment, but, but real love is what self-sacrifice for a neighbor. It's ultimately, we see it in Jesus who, what, gives everything on his own accord for us uh, to bleed and die for that which is unworthy, for we who are unworthy. Right. And so that kind of gives us two things to talk about because like we're, we're Lutherans. And so there's a law answer and a gospel answer for almost every question. And only one of them will be helpful at this, at, at any given time. Like this is how we rightly distinguish between law and gospel. It's not that one is true and then the other is true. It, it's that both are true, but one will kill you. And one will, one will make you alive in Christ if you're already dead. And we need to sort of go through both of those to the, to the law answer then to love your neighbor, let genuine love be for your neighbor. How's that going? Like for, for me, um, I struggle with it. I struggle with it so much that I want to downplay it into sort of like a, a Midwestern kindness to my neighbor that, that might ask how you're doing, but I don't really want to hear anything other than good. Um, and then that's, that's not a good thing that that's not a good thing that that's a bad thing. And then for, for uh, the gospel answer, because you genuinely struggle to, to love your neighbor, I, I need genuine love from Jesus. Yeah. You know, and again, I had an old professor, wonderful, wonderful man. He once said to us, he'd always come into like, we had these, these groups of seminarians. We had these uh, once a week, we'd get together and it was kind of a, I don't know what the term was, spiritual formation or some sort of clever term they had, but it was just basically us guys getting together with a, a older professor and we would have heart to heart talks. That's and he'd always say to us, he said, gentlemen, he said, you can't rightly, you will not be able to rightly love your flocks until you are properly loved yourself by the Christ. And in other words, his whole point was, uh, if you want to properly love your neighbor, or properly love your wife, you have to be properly loved yourself and understanding what Jesus did for you. And so, you know, that to your point there, you know, in, in wanting to love my wife or love my kids or love my neighbor, um, and for, for the youth that are, are watching and listening to, to, to love their friends, um, we can set that up where we, we can set up to try and love them. And ultimately, we're only going to be able to bleed so much for our neighbor until we what run out of blood, run out of suffering for them. And that's where we have to what, continually be returned back to abide in Christ and his love for us. Uh, and that's the reason why, the other part of it too, that's the reason why the gospel never gets old because we're always needing it. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't say to my wife one time, just, I love you and that's it. You know, I'm constantly saying, I love you. And when she says that, she, when I call her and she says, she goes, hey, handsome. And she calls me handsome. And then she says, I love you. And, and, and it just it just absolutely fills me every time to hear that I'm loved by my wife. But it even fills me even more to hear that that in spite of all my failures and 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 sin and so forth and all my loveless actions, that the God of the universe uh, sent His only begotten Son for me. And Jesus says, "I choose you, Matt, and I love you, and I bleed for you, and I die for you, and I rise for you, and I give you my body and blood, and I claimed you as my own in baptism. Uh, I'm going to continue loving loving you to the very end." to be loved and to be justified in Christ, um, to, it just never gets old. You know, mm -hmm. it never gets old because we constantly need to hear that because I'm so loveless myself to hear about a loving savior. is just, it's just music to the ears. Absolutely. It doesn't just raise the standard of what love's lo love looks like. I should aspire to love my neighbor the same way that Jesus loves me, but it actually fulfills all the places where I fall short. And, and now I can actually get a little bit more honest about how genuine love for neighbor is going. And I can say there are places where I have, I've been polite, but I, I absolutely haven't sacrificed. There are places where I have not even been polite and, and that's not okay. That That's not freedom to hurt people, but that's just sort of the reality that I need the love of Jesus myself. I need the forgiveness of Jesus myself so that I can be bound closer to my neighbor. Otherwise there has to be sort of that safe distance because when two sinners are put close together, I, I, I love my wife and I sacrifice for my wife. God willing, she sacrifices for me, but also that woman knows the kind of sinner I am better than anybody else in this universe, aside from the creator. Um, she is, she has seen me at my lowest and, and vice versa. Um, I can't name a person I have sinned against more than the person I'm supposed to love the most. And so I, I'm not proud of it. It's not okay. It's definitely not a good thing. But the thing that lets me say that out loud is that when she looks at me, she sees a sinner that Jesus died for. And, and, mm -hmm. and I hear myself that I am a baptized sinner that Jesus died for. And so I'm going to get up and I'm going to try all the more to, to love her the, the way that, that she deserves. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a good friend uh, and, and, and I'll talk to him. I say, Hey, what's, what's going on? And he's Mike is, Hey Mike, what's going on? You know, he's like, just, you know, uh, going around spilling Jesus on people. And, uh, and, and the way he says it, it's basically this idea of what 
the cup that fills, it overflows. And so we spill the love of Jesus on other people. And, uh, and when the cup is not full, we can't spill. And so when, when the cup is empty, we need to be what loved ourselves. And so again, I mean, that comes back to this idea that, that, that we Christians, we love, right? Because he first loved us. And so it's not, it's not that we better get out in love because he loved us. No, it's the fact of the matter is that when we are properly loved, like that old professor said, when we're properly loved, we love those around us. And so we can only rightly love when we're being loved ourselves. And that's genuine love, you know, to right. be loved by the savior. And uh, everything else, like you said, you mentioned this, the mid, this Midwest love or the superficial love or the flippant idea of love. And, and it just kind of irritates me this whole, like, you know, sending you positive feelings. That's, that's nothing. There's no sacrifice to that. That's just an easy little, you know, or, or like a little emoji or a, you know, a little meme. You can just oh, send you love that, that that's one click. There's no suffering to that. Uh, but real love suffers, real love bleeds, real love dies, real love serves your neighbor. And that's in Jesus. Right. And there's genuine comfort to be found there too. Like this is, this is a thing that actually doesn't just sort of say like, all right, somebody else wishes things were better, but there, there is actually somebody who's willing to sit with me in the pit. Like this, this is a, a, a comfort for your, your conscience. This is a comfort for your wounds. This is, this is a comfort for your soul. Um, when we, we are called to love each other, it gets messy. Um, and, and it's, it's supposed to, but at the same time, um, that, that we can sort of look to Jesus for this, that, that we can find our, our comfort in him. It, it, it lets us I don't want to just say be okay with not being okay, but it, it lets us actually find the balm to our wounds. It, it, it lets us sort of find the answer to all the things that are wrong. So that when we start to look at each other, uh, we, we can, we can be willing then not only to point each other to Jesus, but, but to find him ourselves for all the things that, that we can't fix or, or just good vibe away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's abiding, right? Uh, Jesus is always what stay put, right? Um, and so the problem is oftentimes is that we, we we're prone to like that old thing. We're prone to leave. We're prone to wander, leave the God that we love, uh, or that loves us, we should say. And, uh, and so it's always what being put back to where we belong, uh, mm -hmm. back in our baptisms, back at the table, back with ears to hear the absolution, the forgiveness of sins. And, and there, uh, therein lies love, uh, for us and, uh, ultimately for our neighbor. I love it. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, good to see you, Harrison. Have a great day.